Rabbi Tobia Singer is a well-known debater and runs a popular YouTube channel mostly focused on countering Christian apologetics. Here I'm reviewing a video where Singer claims that we don't know who wrote the Gospels, but it probably wasn't the traditional authors. This is the final installment in a three-part series of videos. If you haven't watched the first two, feel free to go ahead and check them out. In this clip, Singer says that there's nothing in the Gospel of Matthew that would indicate that Matthew the tax collector wrote it. Really? Nothing? Are you sure? And then Christians just can't believe that Matthew was actually written by Matthew, although there's nothing in the book of Matthew that would indicate that quite the contrary. Matthew 9.9 makes it very clear that the writer was definitely not Matthew, but writing in the third person. Great question. Thank you. Let's think about this for just a minute. Matthew himself was traditionally identified as a tax collector, and out of all the Gospels, Matthew's by far shows the greatest level of financial interest, including numerous references to money and treasure that Matthew alone records. Let's look at a few examples. Matthew alone mentions the parable about the hidden treasure, the parable about the discovered pearl, that a scribe is compared to someone bringing out old and new treasures, the the account of Peter and the temple tax collectors. In the narrative, the disciples are approached by collectors of this tax, but Matthew doesn't call them by the same Greek word he uses for tax collectors elsewhere. These weren't men employed by the Romans, but by the temple, and Matthew takes the time to point out the difference. As Jesus points out, the sons of the king are exempt from the two drachma tax, but he doesn't want to offend them, so he sends Peter out fishing and says that they'll find a stater in a fish's mouth. Historically, we know that a stater was worth four drachmas, enough to cover Jesus and Peter's temple tax. The names of these two coins aren't found anywhere else in the New Testament. They're exclusive to Matthew. But let's run through even more examples. There's the parable of the servant who was forgiven a huge debt of 10,000 talents, who later refused to forgive a fellow servant a debt of 100 denarii. There's the parable of the workers in the vineyard, who were discontented with their pay of one denarius for a day because the same was given to late arrivals who would work less time. This parable probably caught someone like Matthew's attention, and it also turns out that a denarius was the daily wage during the time of Jesus. We know this from history. But wait, there's myrrh. I know that was a horrible pun, but Matthew alone records the visit of the Magi with their rich gifts, the parable about the talents, the betrayal money of Judas and what was purchased with it, the bribe that was given by the chief priest to the guards at Jesus' tomb. Also, all three synoptic gospels share Jesus' directions to the twelve as they were sent out to preach the gospel. Mark writes, take no money in their belts, and Luke phrases it, take no money. Matthew uses three terms, writing, do not acquire gold, silver, or copper. There's more details that I can get into, but I think that will suffice for now. Matthew uses twice as many references to money than Luke and five more times than Mark. When you add up all these seemingly small clues, the attribution to Matthew seems to be right on the money, blame pun intended. Singer is way off base here. But what about Matthew referring to himself in the third person? When Matthew writes, it's always about what they, Jesus and the disciples, were doing, never about what we, Jesus and the rest of us, were doing. Even when this gospel narrates the event of Matthew being called to become a disciple, it talks about him and not about me. Here's the thing, though. Around 400 AD, St. Augustine encountered this very argument from the Manichaean Faustus. Augustine wrote, Faustus thinks himself wonderfully clever in proving that Matthew was not the writer of this gospel, because when speaking of his own election, he writes not, he saw me and said to me, follow me, but he saw him and spoke to him, follow me. This must have been said either in ignorance or with the intent to mislead. Faustus can hardly be so ignorant as not to have read or heard that narrators, when speaking of themselves, often use a construction as if speaking of another. It is more probable that Faustus wished to bewilder those more ignorant than himself in the hope of getting hold of not a few unacquainted with these things. And Augustine is absolutely right. We see this with the Greek historian Xenophon in Caesar's commentaries, in parts of Josephus's Jewish War, in Nicholas's History, in Dexippus Scythica, and more. Jimmy got some new moves. Stop, Jimmy. Check Jimmy out. <laughs> Jimmy down. Here's the bottom line about this objection. Not only has Tobias Singer been proven wrong, but this objection has been proven wrong over 1,600 years ago. Finally, it's noteworthy that besides the calling of the Galilean fishermen, Matthew Summons is the only other calling that is made into a big deal in the Synoptic Gospels. Why does it have such extraordinary significance? Well, based on the internal evidence that we just observed, I have to think that it's because the early church knew that Matthew was an official biographer of Jesus. It's also noteworthy that after receiving his call, Matthew threw a big party for Jesus. Luke's Gospel records it this way, quote, then Levi hosted a grand banquet for him at his house. Mark's gospel says, quote, in his house. Matthew's gospel is much more modest, saying, quote, in the house, many tax collectors and sinners came to eat with Jesus and his disciples. Notice that Matthew humbly omits all the mentions of himself and the grandness of the event. 
and another piece of the puzzle falls into place. So the call of Matthew isn't evidence against the authorship of Matthew's gospel. If anything, it's evidence for it. Don't let Tobias Singer rattle your faith in the gospels. Thank you.